you know, I was sitting here this morning, and way off in the mountains, the sky was awful dark. You see a low rumble of thunder, a little lightning. I thought that was mighty eerie. Kind of got me to thinking about some Hank stories. You know, I remember hearing once there was a lady that my mom used to know that said that uh, back when she was a little girl, now back in, most folks had to walk everywhere they went back in the hills. They go to prayer meetings, and church, and gatherings, things like that, and then they walk home. Well, they ride a horse, but for the most part, most people just walked. Well, she said one day, they had went to a prayer meeting. Well, I said when they left, Said the moon was shining real good. So they was trying to hurry him get home anyhow. Well, said they was walking down this old dirt road. And they had to pass by this little church. A little graveyard. Well, she said when they got by there, they said it was her and her little brother and one of their friends. Well, said when they got by there, said they heard something, and they stopped. Said their little brother looked up there toward the cemetery and screamed. Said there was this figure. <clears throat> said there was this figure. Right there in the middle of it. It said that it had like a chain wrapped around it. And then the chain was going down into the ground. It said whatever that thing was, said it was a grabbing hold of that chain. It said it would yank on it and pull and everything else. I mean, just with all its might. And said it was screaming top of its lungs. But said the spookiest thing about it was. It said it almost sounded kind of like a, a horse neighing and a pig squealing at the same time. And said she was so scared. Said she froze right there in her tracks. Said her spine turned to complete ice. Well, luckily, said their friend finally got her bearings and pushed her. Said that's all it took. She rushed and grabbed her little brother and they ran. She said, as far as she could remember, they didn't even stop to take a breath the whole time. The rest of what they run all the way home. Said from then on, Neither her, her little brother, as far as she knows, her friend, never would walk by there at night anymore. Another story come from one of my aunts. Said that when her and my uncle first got married, said they moved into a little house. Nice little house, beautiful, kind of off to itself in the country. But I said it just had this heaviness about it. Had a beautiful yard. Just couldn't put your finger on it. Well, 
said, after a couple of days of being there, every morning when she woke up, the kitchen sink would be covered in blood. Well, I said she just tried to, tried to lay it off. Is it maybe it was just rust coming up through the pipes? So she'd wash it out. Wouldn't think nothing else about it. Clean it out. Next morning, same thing. Well, then it started where around midnight there'd be a woman run by the window on the outside, screaming top of her lungs. Well, it's kept on, so they talked to the landlord. Well, the landlord claimed he didn't know nothing about it, so they talked to one of the neighbors. Well, the neighbors said that there was a man and woman that used to live there a long time ago and said that the man got drunk one night and chased her through the yard and killed her, said he stabbed her, said she bled to death right there at the kitchen sink. Another story that comes to mind is something I've always heard my aunt, my great aunt, a few of my distant cousins talk about. I said they used to live in a little house. They weren't far, too awful far from a creek. It said back in everybody had to haul their water if you didn't get it from a well. Well, geared to go to that part of the creek and get their water. It said because when you went down there, you'd see a man walking around with no head. Well, my cousin said he was out riding his bicycle one day. Said he rode down the trail, got close to the creek. Said as soon as he started getting close to the creek, he'd turn around. You know, ride back. And said he'd done that for a while. Well, said one time he was there. Said one time he was riding down through there. It was getting kind of late. Well, he went in there and he stopped and he turned around. He was catching his breath. He said he felt something on his shoulder. He looked over and it was blood. He said he looked up, looked on up, and there standing right directly behind him was that man with no head. He said he screamed bloody murder and took off paddling as fast as his little legs could go but said he needed to go faster because it was chasing him. Said it was running after him and grabbing at him. Said it scared him so bad, he rode his bicycle through the yard, up on the porch, and through the screen door into the house. Said he never went back down that area again. Another tale come from talking to an old timer not long ago. Said that when he was a young man, he remembered hearing somebody talk about up in the southern part of Virginia. Said there was a man out walking. Said he was the town drunk. Well, said he had too much to drink one night. Said he was out. Staggering around. Well, said the poor old fella staggered out in the traffic. And said there was a man that was coming through on his way home from work. Said he was speeding, trying to hurry him get home. Well, the guy staggered out in front of him. He didn't have time to hit his brakes. 
Well, as time went on, the man that was driving the car said he could no longer go down that road. Because he said every time that he'd go down that road, right when he got close to that area, said that man would run out of the wood line. How bloody and twisted up and try to reach for his door handles and try to get in on him. I don't know why, but that always sent chills up my spine. Another one is one I remember hearing my grandparents talk about. Said back a long time ago, whenever somebody would pass, you know, back in a lot of times folks would make their own coffins and caskets out of just old pine boards and things like that. Well, said some people they knew had a little girl. Well, said she got real sick. Well, said they were sitting there one evening late. Said they all sitting outside. Well, said around the corner, said there was a little white coffin come floating around the corner. Like, it was being carried, only you couldn't see nobody. It said it got to the end of the little walkway and turned. And it came up there. And got to the front of the porch. And it was like it was set down. And it just vanished. It said and it was white. It had a little rose carved on it. A couple of days later, sadly, the little girl boat took a fever and passed away. Well, folks, knowing you know how hard it was hitting them, and you know about to drive them crazy, losing their daughter, there was a man in the area who done a lot of woodworking. Well, he made her a little coffin. And it was white. And had a little rose on it. But the thing was, when it happened, the husband and the, and the wife was the only ones that seen it. And he told her not to say nothing in the community here, not to say nothing to nobody. Because they didn't really know what it was or why it was there. Well, I think I'm going to end this one with uh, something a little different. You know, you know, whenever you hear these old stories and stuff like that, you expect most of them to be scary and haunting, and usually most of them is. But from time to time, you get one that's kind of heartwarming. Now this in here I've heard quite often too all my life. And it happened to one of my distant cousins. Said that they moved into a house a long time ago. Now this was back before my time. Uh, back in like the 1930s, I think it was. Well, said they moved in this house. Said it used to belong to a widow woman. Well, she passed. Well, they, you know, her family got her stuff and they cleaned it up. Rented it back out. Well, my cousins got it. They had two kids. And they said that that old woman that lived there, 
So everybody in the community loved her. So they called her Miss Elvie. She says she was like a, a mama and a grandma to everybody. Well, I said uh, when they first moved in, it was a hot part of summer. You know, back then there weren't no air conditioning and stuff. Most folks were lucky if they had any kind of fan. Most folks back then would just have to open up the windows and <laughs> hope for a breeze. Well, they said at night, one of them youngins was in there trying to sleep. It'd be hot and muggy. They said, and, and even in the kids' room, it'd be so hot, you know, your hair would just start to mat to you, you know, just stick to you. Said every night when them babies lay down and go to sleep, said they'd be a cool little breeze come through, and said it would be kindly, kindly decent, and said it would stay that way all night. But as soon as they got up the next morning, it started heating back up. Well, winter time set in. Same way. Back in, you just had to cover up with as many blankets as you could, put on some extra clothes or something like that to stay warm in a lot of places in the house. Because most people back in either had a wood stove or just an old fireplace. Well, same way. So whenever them young you get ready to go to bed, so you could walk in that room and it'd be just toasty warm. And say they'd lay there and curl up and go right to sleep. The next morning, as soon as they got up, it'd start cooling off. And said they couldn't count the times that, you know, the grown ups would wake up to somebody covering them up. Well, one night, Charlie woke up. Said he felt somebody covered him up. He just assumed it was his wife. bitter cold snow on the ground so he just assumed it was her when he heard somebody walking he said he was going to raise up and ask her where she was going he said he raised up opened his eyes a little bit he said there was Miss Elby walking out the door he said she just turned and smiled at him and he said it didn't scare him Said it um, on the contrary, he said it right the opposite. Said he just had a warm feeling come over him, so said he just smiled back at her and laid back down and went back to sleep. And I reckon that happened the rest of the time they was there. Well, folks, I guess I'll get off here and quit in a year. Just thought I'd share a few of them with you. Thought you might enjoy them. I want appreciations for keep coming back, listening to these old tales. Really glad you guys are enjoying them. If you did like this, leave me a comment. Hit that like button. Share me out with all your friends and family, or just tell them about me. It really helped me out a whole lot. I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. God bless. We'll catch you on the next one.